Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I want to talk about the faction which is the friendliest for free-to-play players, which is Legion of Glory. Now, the reason Legion of Glory is considered the friendliest to free-to-play is because they only have three SSRs that they truly need to draw for. There are several other SSRs which makes their lives easier, of course, but you truly only need Ledin, Elwyn, and Liena to play Legion of Glory at the top level. By comparison, to truly play Empire Strategist Stark, which I covered in the first video, you really actually need 6 or 7 SSRs. Because you're going to need Bernhard and Ultimuller. You're going to need Leon as your main damage dealer. You're probably going to really need Lana as well. And then you're going to actually need Elwyn, because Elwyn unlocks the bonds of, let's say, Leon to allow him to actually do full damage. And Elwyn also unlocks the bonds of a lot of other characters, like Liana and so on. And finally, you're going to need a healer, which will be Liana, and you'll probably want Tiaris as well. So that's the seven SSRs you absolutely need, in my opinion, to play Empire Strategy Stark. While you can get away without having Lana, you would then be replacing Lana with, let's say, an SR mage, like Igbert, which is very, very luck-based in whether you get their shards of SRs. So there we go. So overall, you know, Legion of Empire Strategy Stark needs a lot more SSRs than Legion of Glory does. Now, with that said, despite Legion of Glory truly only requiring three SSRs, you generally, of course, want more than that. The reason for that is, as always, to make your life easier and less luck-based. So the SSRs that you want additionally would be ideally getting a copy of Leon. No? So that would be the fourth SSR. The fifth one, which can make your life easier, would be having Lena. Okay? And then the sixth one would be Tiaris. The seventh one that you want would be if you want to transition slowly towards playing a bit of uh, Princess Alliance, would be Luna, because Luna is the Princess Alliance's primary faction buffer and a very versatile character in general. So, in total, you end up wanting the same number of, I guess, SSRs as Empire Strategist Stark, but once again, you don't need them. These are more options that can make your life easier. You can play a, pull, a full Empire team and succeed in PvE very easily. Alright, so with that said, let's now talk about the banners and which banners you would draw on to get the characters that you really critically need. So I'm just going to bring that up and there we go. So, with Legion of Glory, what you really need, as I mentioned, is just three SSRs, which actually shows up in the first two banner sets, right? You want Elwyn, and you want Ledin and Liana. So you, what you truly want to do is, I should also mention this, okay? You can actually hold off on drawing for Elwyn, because Elwyn appears in the focus banner in the banner set number five. So my personal recommendation is actually in the first banner set, draw and get yourself Leon, preferably in let's say the first 20 or 30 summons. Then save up all your draws for the second banner set, Ledin and Liana, because you're going to need to get both of them from this banner set. Once you have Leon, Ledin and Liana, you're basically set. Okay. And you can always pick up Elwyn at the banner set number five because you'll have Lenin, you have Leon. So the very first SSR you get here is guaranteed to be Elwyn. And as for all the other characters that I mentioned, like Tieres and Luna and so on, you can just slowly pick them up from focus banners. You know? Pulling on this focus banner will get you one randomly of Luna, Lena, and Tieres. You know, pulling on this focus banner will get you a guaranteed Angelina. Pulling on this one, because you will have a Bozo, will get you either Bernhardt or Alte Muller. And then, yeah, just keep on going this way. You know, from the banner set number five, you'll get one of the random ones here again. From this one, 
you know, you'll get either Lana or Shafaniel. So you can effectively, by playing as Legion of Glory, you can totally ignore the non-focused banners. The ones that have a chance of getting off-banner characters. And purely draw on just focus banners and eventually get yourself all the SSRs in the game. Yeah. Now, are there drawbacks to playing Legion of Glory? Of course. While Legion of Glory is very friendly to free to plays and allows you to smoothly unlock everyone, the biggest drawback of playing Legion of Glory is that overall, it is the faction that is the least effective in PvP. And the reason for that is because PvP is predominantly based on mages, specifically AoE attacks. Legion of Glory in general just doesn't have very good mages. The mages that it has access to are really Hein, Chris, and Jessica. Both Hein and Jessica, their only fourth ban AoE attack is Meteor, which applies a debuff causing enemies to lose 20% hit points on their next turn. But the problem here is, well, it's only a single debuff, which is very easy to remove. By comparison, you know, by comparison, mages like Bozel and Lana have two big AoE attacks, right? In the case of Lana, she has both Black Hole and Heaven Sanction, which are two AoE strikes with big span, four span here, and then five span here. Bozel has Earthquake as well as Black Hole. So two big AoE blasts. In addition to that, he also has a one-point skill seal, which can have a chance of silencing the enemy's active skills, making them unable to cast skills on their turn. So Bozel in particular is more of like a debuffing machine with AoE strikes because his talent can apply a debuff, seal can apply a debuff. Earthquake applies two debuffs, one that decreases enemy's attack and int, and a debuff that decreases defense. And Black Hole, of course, applies two random debuffs, plus Seal, potentially, plus her, his talent. So Bozel, in general, applies four debuffs, which makes it very tough for the enemy to continue fighting against you. So what ends up happening for Legion of Glory players is they really, if they're planning to PvP at all, they need to branch off into using other characters, such as the Dark characters or the Princess Alliance characters, in order to succeed. But by themselves, Legion of Glory themselves is a terrible faction for PvP. Alright, so with all that said, let's talk about the characters that you'll probably level up for PvE clearing. And it's quite easy. It's the four SSRs I mentioned that you will get. Elwyn, Ledin, Liana, and Shuri. Then for the last two spots, my personal suggestion would be Almeda as a secondary healer and damage dealer because Almeda is great in that her talent heals and her talent can debuff enemies. In addition, Almeda, as long as you clear Time Rift, she will get up to 5 stars. She will eventually get to 6 stars, but even, even uh, 6 months into the game now, I'm not able to bring Almeda up to 6 stars. She's missing 10 shards, and those 10 shards comes from when we get another Time Rift section, which has not been released. Nonetheless, even at 5 stars, you know, there's no luck involved in getting Almeda up to 5 stars. It's just you need to clear the Time Rift. And she has just a great versatility in being a healer, in being able to attack and heal with Holy Word, in, it, in being able to debuff enemies with Tornado as well as her talent. So that's why I think Almeda is a top tier character for playing Legion of Glory. And the final character you would bring, in my opinion, for worth leveling, would be Bozel. And with Bozel, what you would do is, once you get the free copy of him, right? if you clear his Gate of Fate, he'll get an additional 15 shards. You'll want to bring him up to 4 stars, so you have to grind up 35 more shards. But given you can get 4 shards a day with Bozel, just simply grinding 9 days of shards for him will bring him up to 4 stars. If you're willing to grind an additional 25 days 
of Bozal shards, you can bring him up to 5 stars, and that's where he's already completely usable. You don't really need to bring him up to 6. 6 is a nice bonus to have, but not required. My personal preference is bring him up to 4 stars. As for the 5 star level, that's... I would just honestly hold off on that. Wait till you get maybe an off banner Bozal for 50 additional shards, then grind him up to 5 stars then. So those would be the 6 characters that you would use in general. Alternate, you know, you will you will also probably use Leon, but this is uh, because Leon is just, he's one of the best characters in the game for clearing PvE content. So with those, really, these seven characters, you'll be able to clear all content very, very easily. Now, in terms of taking on the Goddess Trials, the parties that you would bring is likely the following. For the Fire Dragon, you'll probably bring the Shuri, Leon, Ledin, and then two healers. Uh, the two healers will be to remove the debuffs that are applied on you. Generally speaking, you'll bring Liana for sure. And then your second healer is completely up to you. You can bring Tiaris if you have her. You can bring Chris if you leveled up Chris, because Chris's talent allows her to remove debuffs. You can bring Sophia, because Sophia has Rewind and she also has Mass Heal to help remove debuffs and heal as well. And you can also bring Almeda. Almeda is probably the least favorable one for fighting against this dragon, the Fire Dragon, simply because she only has Heal that can help remove debuffs. Her other skills, none of them really help dispel debuffs in general. Although, with that said, it's just the way it goes. So for good or for ill, Almeda is probably the least favorable heal alternate healer that we would bring. Next, Thunder Dragon. And Thunder Dragon is actually quite simple for Legion of Glory. Because Elwyn comboed with Liana for at the game can basically single-handedly kill the Thunder Dragon. Even the level 65 and level 70 versions almost. Um, You'll probably want to bring Elwyn, or sorry, you'll probably want to bring Ledin as well, because Ledin will faction buff you up your Elwyn. As for the remaining two character slots, it's truly up to you. You'll probably bring Leon or Shuri to help clear the mobs on the field. Either or is fine. And for the last character spot, you might consider bringing Almeda, because Almeda has pretty good utility in that she can tornado to debuff the thunder dragon's attack and her talent can always heal up your characters so there you go that would but once again in all honesty once you've cleared the mobs elwyn can 1v1 against the thunder dragon and beat him so take that as you will next is the dark dragon and the dark dragon most of the parties that you bring are very similar uh, the dark dragon is vulnerable to Calvary and Flyers. So what you really want, you absolutely want to bring Shuri, right? You'll probably bring Ledin as well to help clear the mobs as usual. Liana, as your primary healer, will always be brought as well. And then the last two spots is where it's up to you. And yeah, either Elwyn or Leon could work. Generally speaking, you'll want Leon because Leon will have the advantage against the Dark Dragon, but if you don't have a Leon, you can bring Elwyn. And then the last character slot is generally a healer. You know, it can be Almeda, it can be Sophia, and it can be Tiaris. Last but not least, the final dragon, and the toughest dragon for Legion of Glory, is Ice. And the reason Ice is so tough is because it's the Ice Dragon really hard counters physical attackers, so you can't actually attack the Ice Dragon with melee attackers in general. However, the interesting point about the Ice Dragon is that it takes full damage from counterattacks. When you attack it, it has a massive damage reduction, but when it's attacking you and your character is in range to counter, then it takes full damage. So for example, if you manage to place Leaden right beside the Ice Dragon, and have the Ice Dragon keep attacking your Leaden, your Leaden can actually take down most of these Ice Dragons, believe it or not. 
of course, your lead-in would have to be properly built with very good equipment, and your lead-in will also need a chance that boost up its hit points quite significantly. Like you would want 9% hit point boost for on the weapon, you'll want like the no, something like this. 10% defense, 11% hit points on the armor. You'll want more hit points on the Anasis helmet and the King's Amulet too. But if your Lennon has that hit point boost to survive any attacks from the Ice Dragon, he can handle the Ice Dragon up to the level 60 version quite effectively. Level 65 version and the level 70 version, which is released much later, you'll actually need ranged attackers at that point. And in those situations, against those dragons is why you'll probably want to level up Bozel or Lana or Luna that I mentioned. You could also use Almeda because she can help add some damage via her holy word, right? And she can also help heal your units in general. As for the last character, um, if you have a high level Chris, like a high star Chris, she's actually very usable to clear the Ice Dragon as well. The problem with using SRs though is that getting SRs, it's utterly random. Generally speaking, you're not going to grind SR character shards unless, except for maybe Vargas. Everyone, for the rest, you'll slowly but steadily get free SR shards anyways, because every time you summon, and you choose to do a 10 times summon like this, you are guaranteed to get at least one SR or higher quality hero. So basically it means every time you do a 10 summon, you're going to get an SR, if not an SSR. So that right there can level up your SRs to the point where you will never need to grind your shards. In my case, I've never grinded any SR shards. I've done 1647 hero summons, and you can see for me, my SRs, I have a whole bunch of level of 6 star S SR characters like Hein and Silver Wolf and Narm and Lithany and Kirikaze, right? But then I have a lot more 5 star ones, right? You can see Varna, Imelda, Egbert, you know, Lance, etc, etc, etc. But I even have two 4 star level SRs, which for me, it was quite unfortunate. My two four-star ones end up being Vargas and Chris. So this random luck aspect on whether you get their shards makes SRs kind of hard to use, to be honest. All right. So with that said, let's. This pretty much covers everything I want to say about Legion of Glory. Um, they are overall the easiest faction to start off with because you'll, you're will you guaranteed to have basically all the characters you need from the second banner, Leden and Liana. That's all you truly need. Leden, Liana, and Shuri, and you're fine. You know? Getting Leon on the first banner will make it easier for them to beat a lot of the content, but he's not truly required. And if you got Leon on the first banner, then you're guaranteed to get Elwyn in the fifth banner set, which gives you the final SSR that you truly need. All right, so on that note, I hope you found this information useful and Nitro out.